So in this video we're going to find the distance between two parallel planes. And there are formulas for doing this. I think a conceptual approach is a little bit nicer because it doesn't require that you memorize a formula. So let's just suppose we have two parallel planes. Here's a plane, here's a plane, and the planes are parallel. We know that if we have the equations of these planes that we also know vectors that are normal to those planes. So if this is plane one and plane two and we have the equations for both planes, we also have the equations of the vectors that are normal or orthogonal to those planes. And they may point in the same direction, they may point in opposite directions. Not doesn't it's not important, but we the, the fact is if we know the coefficients on x, y, and z for the planes, we know, we know normal or orthogonal vectors for both planes. And if I want to find the distance between the two planes, all I really need to do is find a point P in one plane and a point Q in the other plane. And really if I know the distance from Q to the plane, then I know the distance between the two planes. So this really uh, is just the same as finding the distance between a point and a plane. Uh, like we did in the previous video. So what I can do is say, hey, find any point in this plane and any point in this plane, and hey, make the vector from P to Q. Make that vector from P to Q. And then, hey, I've got normal vectors. Pick either one of them, it doesn't matter. Maybe pick the smallest one just because it's convenient. And find the projection of PQ onto that normal vector. And if I find the projection of PQ onto that normal vector, I can then just find the length of that projection. And then I know the distance from Q to the plane, but the distance from Q to the plane is the same as the distance between the two planes. So it really boils down to just doing the same thing we did before, where we want to find the size of the projection of PQ onto either of the two normal vectors. It doesn't matter which of the two that you choose, but you find the size of that projection and you know the difference between the two planes. So the concept is pick either of the two normal vectors, pick the normal vector that's easiest to use. Usually the smallest normal of the two normal vectors. They're parallel planes, so the normal vectors are parallel. It won't matter which one you project onto. Find a point P in one plane, find a point Q in the other plane, construct the vector PQ, and project that vector onto either of the two normals, and then find the length of that projection, and you have the distance between the two planes. So find the distance between the planes given by 3x minus y plus 2 minus 6 equals 0, and 6x minus 2y plus 4z plus 4 equals 0. And we can verify that these two planes are parallel by looking at their normal vectors. So here, this guy, if I call him plane 1, he has normal vector given by the coefficients on the x, y, and z uh, variables. So 3, negative 1, and 2, 3, negative 1, and 2. And this second plane, call him plane 2, has a normal vector 2 given by, find the coefficients on the x, y, z variables, we have 6, negative 2 and 4. And what we want to recognize is that this vector is twice the length of this vector. And so because n1 and n2 are scalar multiples of each other, the two planes must be parallel. And then conceptually, all we do is say, hey, I know two normal vectors. Maybe I pick the smaller of the two normal vectors, uh, this one right here. So here's the normal vector 3 negative 1, 2. Now find any point in this plane, and the easiest way to find a point in this plane is to let two of the three variables be equal to 0. So for example, if I let y equal z equal 0, that's going to give me the equation 3 minus 6, sorry, the equation 3x minus 6 equals 0, and solving this for x, we get x equals 2. So I know that on plane 1, there is the point P given by uh, 2 comma 0 comma 0. And then I want to find some point Q, I don't care where it is, on plane number 2. So plane number 2, if I look at it, probably the most convenient thing to do would be to let x and y be equal to 0 because the equation 4z plus 4 equals 0 has an easy solution. 
So working with plane two, let x equal y equals zero, which is gonna give us the equation four z plus four equals zero, means z equals negative one. So we get a point up here, zero, zero, negative one. So I have a point on plane, uh, on plane one, here's plane two, I have a point on plane two, I have the normal vector for plane one, and all I need to do is construct that vector from P to Q. So constructing the vector PQ, I get zero minus two is negative two, zero minus zero is zero, and negative one minus zero is negative one. And we'll just then take, here's that normal vector, we'll project PQ onto that normal vector and find the size of that projection to get the distance between the two planes. So I want to find the length of the projection of PQ onto, we want to find that, right? If we're doing the projection of PQ onto normal vector one, we just need the size of that projection, which is given by the absolute value of the vector PQ dotted with the normal vector one, divided by the size of normal vector one, which is gonna equal, we just need the dot product of PQ, which is negative two, zero negative one with the normal vector one which is the vector neg uh, three sorry negative one two and then we need to divide it by the size of that normal vector and take the absolute value of the result but the size of normal vector one is just given by the square root of the sum of the squares of the vector components so three squared is nine negative one squared is one and two squared is four, which gives us the square root of uh, nine plus five is 14. So this is gonna be the square root of 14. And then we take that dot product in the numerator, we get negative two times three is negative six, plus zero times negative one is zero, plus negative one times two is negative two, all over the square root of 14 which is equal to the absolute value of negative eight over the square root of 14, which is just eight over the square root of 14.